the reality is and the truth is they're trying to uh what do they call it what do they call it quarantine an economic quarantine of anthony hudson and we need to break that quarantine you need to break that quarantine you need to break it Cause the terrorism. You spoke of, and we look at the word terrorism, and you spoke on Britain early, and I'm sure in earlier uh, history, Britain saw our liberation fighters as terrorists. So how how can we find a universal term for terrorism when some may feel like it's freedom fighting or homeland protection? Well, I think the definition is important, but I don't think we can make a mistake and think that the American revolutionaries were terrorists. They didn't just for pleasure behead people uh, and murder p innocent people for no reason whatsoever. And I think that their, the murder of innocent people for political reasons, I think, is uh, one aspect of, the, of a terrorist definition. And I, I, I think that one of the big things that has to happen is to try to come up with a common definition uh, because that would help us fight it. And one of the things that I thought might have been possible earlier, which was an opportunity missed by the Bush administration, um, the Iranians dislike uh, the Taliban as much as we do. Uh, and there was, I think, a possibility at one time to work with Iran to try to figure out a common definition of terrorism. But they immediately got put on the axis of evil list, and that complicated that. But I do, one of the reasons to be interested in what the International Criminal Court is doing in order to be able to come up with some kind of a, a common definition of terrorism. But I think we have to be careful not to uh, see freedom fighters and terrorists as the same thing, because terrorists just murder uh, for the sake of killing and not necessarily for a cause. Do you think if we would analogize a police action to a terrorist act and ask the world to denounce all violence. Uh, you had, you know, we had Gandhi who shut India down for three days and etc. I think if the world said all violence is terrorism against humanity, therefore we will not support it anymore. Then we have a budget of 50 percent of Even our discretionary police. spending. Again, I, you know, I, I'm a religious. You are an observant Jew. I believe in coming to the Messiah. I believe in the Messianic time. Good. And I know that the Messiah will come. We'll have no police. It's not written in the Bible as a police. All right. I mean, not this kind of police anyway. But for the moment, we live in a society that we live in the police. There are social problems. How could you deal with, with drugs and with thieves and with uh, people who do commit violence, rapists? I wish, again, if I, if I had another answer, I would give you. I don't have another answer. Right. I know it's simply because we have no other answer we accept the police, but will society be able to survive without police? Should try. But I'll give you an example. In Costa Rica, you had here uh, last year, I, I was told, my friend uh, Oscar Arias, uh, they abolished the army. Hope it's very good. But the police force there is almost an army. <laughs> Because you cannot live like that. There are degrees of violence. There are, there are things that I don't accept in society. I'm against capital punishment. No matter what, I'm against capital punishment. I think that if yes, and they ask me what about murderers or serial murderers, I would say life imprisonment, but no capital punishment. I don't want a system which is my system, I, I support it with my little bit tax money after all, it's my vote, to be an agent of death. Not for me. 
And yet, in America today, so many states will not vote for the governor if the governor is not for capital punishment. I think they could not have voted for the country would not have voted for Bush if Texas had abolished capital punishment. The enemy doesn't have any new tricks. He only increases old tricks. Pump drops in the community, 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 make them, they make it total, 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 total insecurity, so they have to depend on the police once again. The plan is very simple. I see no complications to it at all. Matter of fact, I myself control them. Does the police increase the drugs in the community, increase the drugs in the community, divide the community along gangs, make the community totally insecure, so everybody say, we need the police, we need the police, and once again they have it. If one doesn't bring in the oppressor, one will think that the problem is the drug addicts. One will think it's the drug sellers. Of course, they are the problem, but they are the secondary problem. The primary problem is the source of the problem, those who bring the drugs into it. When are you going to get so outraged? Thousands of black men and women as police. Why do you think you can't turn on the news or TV and see a white family complaining that a black cop shot their loved one in the back because they thought the cell phone was a gun? You think it's because black cops is more spiritual? You think it's because they're better trained? Black cops got enough sense to know white folks ain't going to tolerate it. And one day when we stop tolerating, I'm not talking about go get no gun. I'm talking about one day when we stop tolerating, it'll stop. And you got to also understand in America, we live in a neighborhood, not a community. A community is you control your schools, huh? You control your cops, huh? You control the economics. So so the unique situation for many black Americans is that we have the criminal element that has been recycled in the prisons. You will have that coupled with police who in some cases engage in brutal behavior. So the distinction in many black communities is that we have to run from the cops and the robbers. It's a bad thing. That if somebody is robbing your house, you don't know whether to call the police or not. But that sounds like an extreme statement. Well, let me run you back. New York, Brooklyn, if you please. I live in Brooklyn, born and raised there. I live in the 70th precinct. Why is the 70th precinct known to New Yorkers? 70th precinct is where a young man was taken from in front of a nightclub, had an argument with a policeman. He took him not to a wooded secluded area, not to the backwoods, but took him to the police station house, took him in the bathroom, made him pull his pants down, took a plunger up, up his rectum, almost killed him. 200 policemen in the precinct, not one of them stopped the cop, reported the cop, arrested the cop, or voluntarily testified against the cop. Name is Adam the Wheel. When we fought the case, got federal charges on the police, went to trial for over a year and a half, they said that the young man got the injuries in a homosexual relationship. They said that shoppers out there perpetrating the hopes until the cop himself came in court and admitted he did now, I live in that precinct. I could have called that policeman to my house, take care of my family. So people would discuss, why do I march? Why do I do what I do? It is easy if you do not live under circumstances like that to intellectualize how you will fight social policy. But when you live under circumstances as brutal as that, However you react,